This video is called Feeling Protected and it's part 12 of my series Coco Goes to the Spa. Welcome to AndyTube and let's get started. During the rehab we've, we've degreased the whole machine and uh, cleaned parts and reassembled and lubricated and oiled and upgraded the light bulb. One of the things that I really like to do during a restoration or rehab is to do a final cleaning of all the painted uh, surfaces and most of the chrome surfaces and put some protection on. And uh, I have a couple products that I've used and I'm happy with. One is the Meguiar's Cleaner Wax. Uh, I used that uh, first to get off all my greasy, oily fingerprints, any oxidation of the paint that's left behind after the cleaning, and any mineral deposits from the from the water, <laughs> the tap water here in in the desert. You know we're at the the low end of of all the water that flows, so our our mineral content is pretty high. And then I put on uh, at least a couple coats of this Meguiar's Gold Class uh, Carnuba Plus. And uh, I chose these products just based on recommendations of a couple of friends and the guys at the uh, auto store uh, for, for being good quality and, uh, you know, a good reputation and a reasonable price. And all of the people I talked to definitely recommended some type of Carnuba or Carnaba wax because they said it was one of the hardest waxes uh, out there. So the protection was good and it lasted longer. Now, sometimes on a machine, I encounter uh, scratches and blemishes. And some of them can be pretty severe and some are, are pretty minor. And a lot of people don't mind that. They don't bother with scratches and blemishes. Uh, either they just, you know, they're not worried about it, or they figured that that kind of uh, surface just reflects the, the heritage of their vintage machine. Um, so myself, uh, the the worst scratches you, you can't do much about uh, unless you come up with some kind of a touch-up paint but the minor uh, pin scratches and, and uh, you know I've had machines that I bought where somebody hauled it out of uh, grandma's storeroom and, and took a damp cloth and wiped off all the grit that was on there and left a lot of scratches behind just from that so one of the so I, I do like to uh, polish the machine that way sometimes sometimes it's not required but sometimes I like to do it and one of the first products I heard about and tried was this Novus uh, scratch remover and my understanding it was made more for uh, plastics and uh, what's that clear coat type of paint on the newer vehicles and they have a three-step um, this um, product this is the number two and it's called a fine scratch remover I think number one is more like a cleaner uh, type of thing before you use this and number three is if you have heavier uh, scratches but most of these scratch removing products I find have some kind of a grit or a silicone base something like that 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 um, polishes and after speaking with quite a few people I decided I didn't want to use some kind of a paint polishing compound 
or rubbing compound or anything like that. I tried a paint polishing once on a touch and sew and and I tried to be gentle with it but it just took off too much gloss in my opinion. So that's when I tried this. But I recently spoke with a couple people who like to use this product and it's made by Rain X which is a well-known company and it's called their headlight restorer and it is specifically made for those uh, clear plastic headlight lenses that get foggy and stuff like that so they said it's um, you know it's got some uh, I guess what I call grit in it but still it's made for plastic so it's it's not as uh, strong as a paint type of polish so I picked this up at the local uh, auto parts store and I spoke with a couple guys there and they had used it and they thought it was great and they thought it would be great for uh, my planned use of smoothing out the finish on a vintage sewing machine so I tried it uh, after I bought it and stuff I was reading the directions on the back and it says not for use on paint whoops <laughs> so uh, I'm still gonna try it just to see how it turns out and I also had two or three people tell me just use um, regular old toothpaste uh, you know you don't need the ones with the additive for the brightening and whiteners and all that kind of stuff just get some regular old uh, toothpaste it's okay if it has fluoride but that that has enough to softly polish uh, out the fine scratches without damaging the paint so I picked some of this up at um, the dollar store it was a dollar for this Colgate cavity protection toothpaste and I actually used some to polish some uh, vintage silver Indian made um, bracelets that I own that were all tarnished and everything and it actually worked real well very well on that so I'm going to kind of compare these three when I first bought this it was ten dollars for this little two ounce bottle plus shipping so it was like almost fourteen dollars but I've used it before on some paint and it's worked pretty well this was about six dollars I think or maybe seven for a uh, five ounce uh, bottle here and this was a dollar but I'm gonna put links to all this stuff in the description below the video when I went to get the links today I see the price on this is is a lot less nowadays and that for under ten dollars you can buy like a six or eight ounce bottle of this and you can buy uh, kits for ten dollars that have two ounce bottles of the number one number two and three so the price has come down on that which I, I didn't know and that was what was leading me to try uh, other mm, polishers you know because this seemed kind of pricey to me but uh, I'm going to give it a try here and since I haven't used a couple of these I'm hesitant to to use it on a cocoa uh, you know they say you'd try it and I could try it on some of this area and stuff like that but then I remembered that uh, I have I'm the proud owner of Coco's cousin and uh, she's already kind of blemished up from abuse so I thought well I'm gonna try this polish on on Coco's cousin before I try anything on Coco so let me get Coco's uh, cousin here uh, Coco, I'm going to put you over on my other table here for a minute, and then I'll go get your cousin, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's Coco's cousin, and her name is Uh-Oh. Uh-Oh. <laughs> and I named her that because uh, 
she had some kind of a chemical spill on here that that discolored or just like ate up the coloring in the paint I don't know how well it's gonna show on camera here but there's uh, and there's a little bit of whatever it was left all hard here so I don't know if it was like fingernail polish remover or what it was but I think hanging in the cabinet it was spilled on the edge and just kinda dribbled right down and uh, she's got a few uh, scratches and stuff from normal wear but she does have this uh, dis discoloring which is going to lower her value and uh, so forth so I'm going to uh, use her <laughs> as a guinea pig for this uh, these new polishes here and I've separated some areas here to use the different ones and uh, I think I'm going to start with the Novus number two fine polisher in this area here and uh, then I'll use the Rain-X in the middle and the toothpaste on the right and we'll see we'll see how it goes now what I what I use for waxing and this kind of stuff are just these wax and protectant applicator pads and I get two of these for a dollar at the dollar store and then I cut them into four pieces you know so I get eight of these for a dollar and uh, I prefer these ones that have kind of a cotton terry cloth uh, cover versus just the straight foam uh, I've tried both most of the waxes that you buy have just a foam applicator so I guess that's supposed to be the best but I've tried them and I still kind of prefer this uh, cotton one but but really I guess it's up to you so what they say with this Novus is to shake it good and to uh, use an applicator and go in circles and rub it in until it's dry and then uh, buff it off with a dry cloth so that's what I'm going to try here I'm just going to put a little bit of this uh, on this applicator it, it really doesn't have much of an odor or anything and I'm going to just start rubbing it on here in circular and if I get it on the chrome I don't mind that I've used the cleaner wax and stuff on chrome before with good results so I'm just going to rub that in I might not have used enough because it seems like it's already drying pretty fast so let me get a little bit more here but what I found is with this, this polish is you can definitely see that it takes some paint off so I try and find a you know a, an even application pressure because um, I, I don't want to bear down too hard and remove any more paint than I need to but I want to bear down hard enough that it makes it worthwhile for doing and my goal is really to remove oxidized paint and lighter scratches and uh, smooth things out because the smoother the paint then the better you results you have when you wax it so you can see how much beige uh, came off with that let me find a here's a uh, microfiber cloth so I'm gonna go ahead and that that dries real quick I gotta say and it looks like it did nice really I know it's hard to tell with the lighting 
So let me make sure that I get it mostly off here. So if I tilt that, are we going to get any? Going to get any shine on there? Mm-hmm. Not too bad. I think that I could have. What if I put the light back there? I think that I could have um, applied a little bit more of pressure, but it did. It did a good job, and, and like I said, I've used it before and was happy. So now I want to use this uh, Rainex product. And that instruction says to apply it with a damp uh, applicator or towel. And, uh, oops, that's my used one. Let me get a fresh one so I don't mix the products. I got some water here. I'll just dip it and wring it out a little bit. And uh, it says to put it on with circular motion and apply pressure and then rinse it off and wipe it off and dry it. So let me put some of this on. This just looks like a, a white kind of paste. I feel a little grittiness in it. It doesn't have any odor. So let's try this. This product goes a lot farther than the Novus. And of course it shouldn't dry because I'm using a damp applicator. And I, I am putting a little more pressure than I did with the Novus because I, I think I went a little bit light on the Novus. Mm -hmm. It goes on easy. Mm-hmm. Just barely shows some oxidized paint coming off. Of course, some of this paint was already missing, in my opinion. Kind of had those gray spots from whatever somebody spilled on it. But let's uh, let's see how this affects that spot and the paint. So. Now rinse it. I, I don't really have anything to rinse it here, so I'm just going to dip the other side of the applicator in water and try and wipe that polish off of there mostly. And then I'll take my my uh, microfiber cloth and just try and dry that area. Mm hmm okay well what I'm seeing is um, just from how I used it and I don't know if I used enough or long enough maybe my applicator was too wet but it doesn't seem to have made things quite as glossy on here I still have some uh, rough surfaces on here and uh, where this was more smooth and glossy this feels a little uh, rough still so in trying to be uh, fair and all I think what I'm going to do is uh, do the rain X again and uh, I may have had it too wet uh, before so I'm going to uh, kind of squeeze out the excess moisture in that pad I think maybe the the cotton covering really retained the moisture and I didn't wring it out enough <laughs> And I, I want to give the Rain-X a chance to work, and I think I'm going to apply more pressure 
because it appears to be even less abrasive than the Novus, which is which is fine. Um, you know, again, what I want to do is uh, get rid of the small um, surface scratches and smooth things out. So let's try this Novus or, or this uh, Rainex um, headlight restore. Let's do it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put a lot more pressure on it this time because I see that it's not as abrasive. It doesn't say how long to do it, you know, and stuff like that. And I, I think there's attachments for my Dremel that I could get to, to use a power source. Uh, I know there's polishing pads for like a cordless or electric drill. And those things may speed up this process, but I, I don't know. I kind of like doing, doing it by hand. Um, I've stated before that uh, I used a lot of hand tools and stuff in my career as a telephone tech and what got me into restoring machines partially was I missed doing stuff like that so I don't I don't mind you know to turn on a ball game or the news or music on the radio and just kind of uh, this is a damp cloth now because it says to wash rinse this off uh, you know when you're using it on the headlight so I, I got a damp cloth here I'm just going to try and remove all the polish polishing paste and uh, I did see a couple videos about the Novus polish and you know they talked about uh, using the polish more than once if you weren't satisfied you know that you could put another application or even a third to get the smoothness and gloss that you desired as long as you weren't hurting the plastic or in my case the paint okay so I've got that pretty removed now oh, let's see I see one little spot back here this is a little takes a little more work to get this off than the Novus but I see that that did make a difference. Um, I see I still have some rough spots here right along where that chemical spill was. But it's a lot smoother now. It's not as tacky or grippy. It doesn't squeak when I rub it. And the areas here of the paint that were not affected by that chemical smil spill are a lot more glossy this time. Uh, they're more comparable with the, f the feel and the look of the Novus. It's hard, hard to feel or tell them apart. So I'm glad I, I tried it again. And I'm not even sure on a small thing like a sewing machine that I would even use a damp applicator I think that's more if you're trying to cover you know a big old uh, headlight plastic lens and I, I would use any of these polishers in a fairly small area at a time just so that you can control them but actually you know now that I've done that I would say that it's comparable to uh, the Novus which which I'm glad because the the price of this is is affordable and uh, after I bought this at the auto store about a week later I happened to be in a Walmart store and it was in their hardware section too for about the same price so it's readily available um, in my experience the Novus I, I had I looked for it around town and called a few places and some didn't know what it was but you know, some just said, "Oh, you got to buy it on eBay or Amazon," and I did buy. I did buy this. At the time I bought it, a guy on eBay had the best price of ten bucks. So, and the 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 three bottle kit back then was like twenty eight something. Whew. So, 
anyway, I, I'm happy with the, the Rain X, so that's cool. So, uh, what's left here is the toothpaste. And I think that I'm going to get the applicator for it a little bit damp. But I think I'm going to wring it out real good too. And I'm really interested to try this. Uh, you know, it definitely has an odor because of toothpaste. But I just took a slightly damp cloth and I rubbed this toothpaste all over my silver bracelets. Um, one at a time, you know, with just my fingers. And kind of use just my fingers to polish it and stuff. Then I used, uh, took them to the sink and just washed them off there and dried them, and they came out. They came out pretty good. So here we go with the toothpaste. And if you get some of this in the oil ports, of course you want to avoid that. I guess you could stick a pipe cleaner or something in there, but I used the dental um, little brushes, interdental brushes, to to clean those out. When after I wax anyway because invariably a little bit of wax gets in there and uh, this I'm going to try and ap applying as much uh, pressure as I did with the rain x because this shouldn't be very abrasive at all and if you remember the the Novus you could see the beige paint that it was taken off and on the um, Mm. Mm. Rain X, not nearly as much. So I don't know what this toothpaste is going to be be like, but I, I'd be interested to see if it works as good um, as these more expensive ones. It's staying a little bit uh, damp here, and it's going on fine. It's a little thicker, tackier feeling as I'm applying it. But uh, let's see. Let's see how it does. Let me look at the applicator first. Hmm. Yeah, I see some that is picking up some of the color. That's interesting. Comparing how much just the applicators afterwards, I'd say the Novus had more discoloration, and this would be second, and the Rain-X had the, the least discoloration. So I'm wondering if that means that this is a little bit more abrasive than the Rain-X. I wonder what this does to your teeth over time. Huh? <laughs> Okay, let's let's take my damp microfiber cloth to try and wipe off the toothpaste residue here. And uh, another couple couple spots here. That's part of this is when you use a polish is getting it off, getting it back off because you don't want to you don't want to leave it on there because it it kind of discolors and leaves a, a real thin kind of milky coating. I found that out on a spot that I had done with the Novus and didn't quite get it all removed and uh, I had to kind of go back and put a little more Novus on that spot and polish it a little bit and then uh, remove it real well. So I see some res. Yeah, there, there is a residue coming off on the damp cloth. I want to be sure and get it all off. It's got a nice, fresh, minty <laughs> smell. <laughs> Where these other two products I used didn't have any kind of an odor. This does smell like toothpaste, you know. Uh, later when I do the cleaner wax and carnauba, I think that'll all go away. Seems like those waxes kind of have a vanilla type residue smell all right so let's see how that shined up here mm-hmm 
pretty good actually so over here is my Novus and this was my uh, oh wait I got toothpaste over on this side let me clean that off I got a little bit of overflow there on the tape side Mm-hmm. Okay, so pretty smooth, shiny. Where the chemical spill was, it's better, but it's still, you know, tacky and rough. On the good paint, it's smooth and comparable to the Rain-X. And the toothpaste is actually smooth and see if I can mess around with the light reflection just not well it's close but I would say uh, when I'm looking down at the reflected light here the reflection here just seems a little bit more clear and this is a little bit more cloudy still but it's nice I mean it's it's an improvement over what was there and again maybe I could have used more toothpaste and maybe I could have done it a little longer so that's that's actually real interesting to me that the toothpaste was almost as good as the other two products so in the end I guess I would use whatever product I had um, they all did okay. I would say that the Novus, going back over there and looking, yeah, I guess I would rate them kind of the way I put them on. That was just a tiny bit better than the Rain-X. And the Rain-X was a tiny bit better than the toothpaste. So that would kind of be one, two, three. But I would not have a problem with using either one of them. I mean, now that I have these, I'll probably use them up. But the toothpaste, when a couple guys told me about it, I was kind of like, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> you know, what a bunch of cheap guys. <laughs> but actually, uh, the way it did on my silver, and the, the, the vintage bracelets I have are just pure silver, you know, hammered and with designs tooled into them. And it did pretty good. And this actually did pretty good. So I wouldn't have a problem using the toothpaste. I think any of those would uh, be okay. So I guess everybody's probably got some kind of toothpaste. You know. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, for my waxing, I'm going to go ahead and use, uh-oh, instead of cocoa right now, just to show you the methods. But I'm taking a damp cloth. I'm going to do it on the extension bed here. And I'm going to, uh, since I didn't degrease this or anything with the crud cutter, I'm just going to try and wipe it off good. And I think on half of it, I'm going to use the Rain X first. And then on the other half, no, just a washed. You know, the dirt and grease kind of tried to be washed off of the of the extension table here. Let's see, I don't know how that's gonna how well that's gonna show up. So it, it has some gloss. I see a little reflection of the chrome down in here. And uh, this this part has very minor surface scratching. Not bad at all. So, uh, let's see, where was my, which one of these applicators, shame on me, I didn't take very good care of them. Well, I'll use a clean side of this damp one. I am going to do the Rain-X on the right side, 
before I use the cleaner wax and wax just to uh, see how much of a difference it makes so try and put this half and I'm go ahead and I'm using a pretty good oops, pressure here um, might as well do a little bit of a throat plate or needle plate while I'm at it and uh, try and just get uh, some of those real fine scratches out not much color comes off with this so this is a pretty mild abrasive which really is what you want in my opinion okay let's see here's a uh, here's one of these uh, applicators that I didn't use so I'm just gonna get it wet and use it to wipe off the toothpaste and then I'll uh, dry it and I'll show you how to put how I put on the cleaner wax and I always use the cleaner wax first and it's really quite well um, you know even if you use the cleaner wax and didn't uh, put carnauba wax at least you'd have some protection on your painted areas you know okay that's a very very mild uh -huh, very mild scratch remover I see a difference so it started with this uh, cleaner wax now and I've got my fourth little applicator I haven't used so uh, it says to to uh, put it on a cool um, car you know it's a car wax so it says put it on a cool surface in the shade and uh, put it on an applicator they don't mention getting it wet they don't say damp applicator so they just say put it on an applicator and spread a thin even coat on the area and they you know they say like do a couple square feet at a time and to let it dry so one thing I like about both of the McGuire's is I can do the whole machine and you know just keep doing it until the whole machine is done and uh, let it dry I like one thing I don't care for the Novus is they say don't let it dry you know when it starts to dry get it off of there and I've had it kind of dry on me as I'm trying to remove it and it's difficult to get off so I like these McGuire, McGuire products and I'll tell you what I usually do is remove the covers from the machine I'll take the arm cover nose cover the bottom plate and even the lamp light shade off and I'll just grab one of those and put a coat of the cleaner wax and put it aside and then I'll, like I'll grab the nose plate and put the cleaner wax and set it aside and so forth and then I'll do the whole machine and then I'll go back to the first piece that I started and I'll remove the cleaner wax and put the carnauba wax on and then put it aside so the wax can dry and I'll go to the second cover that I did and remove the cleaner wax and put the gold wax and onto the third and you know do the machine and I just do that and I I always put at least two of the carnauba wax because I like to put thin coats it's recommended to me to put thin coats so there's what came off using the cleaner wax you know so that's getting more of the oxidized paint off it's almost as good as a scratch remover so we're gonna see since I use some of the Rain-X here and nothing here uh, we're gonna see if we can tell the difference if the polish plastic polish on this paint was worth the effort um, 
So anyway, I have put as many as five coats of wax. You know, I got carried away a couple times. But really, if you put two thin coats on and you do a nice job, going with more than that, I, I'm sure it's going to increase a little bit more protection and make the wax protection last longer. But it didn't really change the look. It didn't give it any more shine after two coats. You know, it didn't it didn't really improve the shine or the look or anything. I think it just added more protection. So I usually put at least two coats on. Now for this one it says um, you know put it on the applicator, spread a thin even coat and allow it to dry and remove it with the Meguiar's Gold Class Supreme Shine Microfiber one of their products or a hundred percent cotton terry cloth towel and turn to a clean position for the final wipe and this is safe on chrome and aluminum but uh, keep off rubber and non painted surfaces um, now I've never used any of the stuff I'm doing today on a black singer I just don't work on the black singers so I don't know what they would do uh, I have used it on a machine like this where there is some decaling like on the back of the machine and up on the arm I've used the waxes but not the polishers but recently uh, Andy Tube viewer uh, emailed me about some machines she's working on and she's showing a sent me a couple pictures of a 221 featherweight and if I understood her right, she used the cleaner wax on Carnuba wax with very good results. I mean, the, wow, the pictures were terrific. And uh, I cried the whole evening after she told me that she she picked up that machine for fifty dollars. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm happy for her, but who? I never, I just never ever find a deal like that. So I have microfiber cloths and I have cotton terry cloths, but what I do is I buy these cheesecloth or cotton cheesecloth and I buy them at the dollar store and I think there's three of these in the package for a dollar and I use them to remove the wax. I've always just used the cheesecloth because it seems to pick up and hold the wax and, and remove it quicker. So I like uh, using the cheesecloth and uh, you know I'm, I'm already done here. Now I've gone back a couple times with a terry cloth a towel real nice uh, you know cotton terry cloth and buffed them and it just didn't seem to do much more than just using the cheesecloth and, and buffing it with that. So there's the cleaner wax, and uh, well, it looks it looks pretty good. I'm trying to look at both sides here, and uh, see, I just I just don't know how this is going to turn out. My little camera viewer is only three inches. And I don't know how it's going to show for you guys. But feeling it, um, I can't feel any difference going across to may, maybe the polish just a little bit glossier. Looking at it here with the light and a closer view. Just just a tiny bit. But not very much. So, if you've got a lot of surface scratches, I would think that these polishes, even the toothpaste, put a little elbow grease in it, you know, I think that it's probably worth your while. But if you don't want to do that, this this cleaner wax is very impressive and uh, it says polishes and protects in one easy step with a high gloss shine so even if you only 
did the cleaner wax and there's there's other cleaner waxes I'm sure in other brands this just happens to be what was recommended and I bought it and I'm like hey this stuff's great so I quit looking you know I'm like okay I'm, I'm done finding a cleaner wax but if you have other cleaner waxes and stuff that's that's fine but I sure like the results of using it to get all the oxidation and minerals and you know all the prints from me handling it as, as I'm putting it together and moving it around and adjusting stuff I was just really impressed with wow that, that really cleans it up nice and puts a nice shine so next I'm going to show you how to put on the how I put on the Meguiar's okay Uh, just before I went to film this last uh, section here, uh, my, my battery needed recharging, so I put it on the charger, and I was reviewing the last couple of uh, sections that I filmed, and I, I noticed that uh, when I watched the video on my computer, that I could, um, after the the polisher I could see some reflections of the uh, needle bar and stuff down in the paint and I thought oh that's that's good and then after uh, putting the cleaner wax they showed up even a little bit more so that's that's a good sign that you know it's getting uh, the wax fills in the little places and makes an even smoother surface and it uh, is reflecting the shine. So uh, I'm going to put this uh, uh, Meguiar's Gold Class Carnuba Plus uh, wax on here now and uh, I like to put it on pretty thin I mean I've this is uh, over two years old and you see how much I have left. Of course, it doesn't take a whole lot to do a, a machine. But uh, most of the people I've talked to that I think have a better understanding of wax than me say that you're better off with a thinner uh, coat. You know, especially on a, a Carnuba wax. So I just go in the circles and uh, you don't have to bear down hard at, at all the idea is just to get good coverage of everything and of course then you gotta on this type of wax you gotta uh, wait for it to to dry let me check the directions here it's been so long uh, apply a small amount to an applicator and spread a thin even coat over the entire vehicle and allow to dry and then use their microfiber or towel or 100% cotton terry towel turning to a clean portion for the final wipe uh, this product can also be used with an orbital buffer DA polisher keep this product off of rubber vinyl and non-painted surfaces Hmm. So I've used this on chrome uh, all the time too and it does a real nice job. So and uh, of course I have used uh, metal polishes on the chrome and metal parts also and I've used the Dremel uh, with the wire brush attachment to polish stuff up. And a Andy2 viewer recently wrote me and said that they had used uh, Meguiar's metal polish and had great success with it. So I'm thinking next time I'm at some place that sells it, I think I want to try that. That might be uh, better than the Brasso that I've used for years. So I think... Yeah, it's still still not dry yet, so I'll come back when it's dry. You know, I, I never before paid attention to how long it takes this wax to dry. I uh, just do like the arm cover, 
put it aside, do the nose cover, and work my way through all the covers, including the bottom, and then do the whole machine, and then go back to the arm cover, and it's, you know, it's dry, so I take the cheesecloth like this and take it off, and then I put a fresh coat, like the second coat on, and just work my way through like that. So I had to wait like three or four minutes before I felt this was really dry. But uh, it's it signed up good. And uh, I can tell the difference between this and the cleaner wax. So I, I feel it's worth it. I'm going to put one more light coat on here. Since I usually put two two coats on everything and then we're going to call it a day and uh, I'll be working on cocoa now it's a couple places I want to polish and then I'll be using the cleaner wax and put a couple coats of this carnauba wax on there so the next time you see cocoa she'll be all shined up and uh, I think you'll you'll appreciate how good she looks. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'll come back for a final buffing and the end of uh, part twelve. Okay, that second coat is dried, so I'll just buff it off with this cheesecloth. And uh, you know when you get. Um, when you're when you're waxing the machine, if you get little uh, like over wipes of wax, I use uh, a tooth wooden toothpick or something plastic in the uh, oil ports or any holes like that. I'll stick a I'll just use like a a dry interdental brush to clean them out like that. Uh, same thing in the little screw slots because it just seems like inevitably you get a little bit of wax you know uh, over wipe kind of uh, here and there no big deal so real nice that that wax always turns out real real nice there and if you know, um, again, these products that I use, the Meguiar's, uh, it's just the first ones I ever tried, and I, I'm real, I'm real happy with them. But I'm sure there's other brands, and you may have uh, waxes and uh, polishes and things like this uh, on hand already. You know, so feel free to use your favorite one or whatever's available to you. But uh, I think any good car wax, um, your machine's going to appreciate it. And you're going to protect the finish on it from oxidation and sunlight and, you know, your, the, the oil from your hands and chemicals that may be in the fabrics and stuff like that. So you're just going to keep it looking nice. And you want it smooth so your fabric, you know, will flow freely across there. So, that was the protection. And like I said, I'll be doing cocoa now, the whole, the whole thing, polishing a few, a few spots and uh, putting a couple coats of wax on. And then uh, when you come back for part 13, I called it One Proud Lady. Uh, if you see some of my series, any machine that I restore, I always do kind of a tribute slideshow. Uh, showing the how the machine looks now that it's been restored and I'm going to do the same thing uh, for Coco because uh, you know she didn't have a what I call a full restore but a very nice rehabilitation and she's uh, sewing oh, come here Coco let's get you back in the place of honor here uh, she's sewing real well so I want to uh, clean her all up and uh, show how nice that, that she's turned out and that like I said that will be part 13 one proud lady 
And uh, after that, I'm going to kind of uh, continue. To me, the rehabilitation will have been done. But I'm going to continue doing work on this 301 for people who um, might be having trouble or need help with the feed dog, the, the needle bar, the presser bar system. Um, timing, I want to show how to set the timing if you've lost your timing for some reason. I want to show hook removal and I think, uh, I think I'm going to be able to show you a way to remove the hook without changing the timing on the machine. And we want to do that because there's this thread loop guard in the back that can get uh, worn and start catching threads and stuff like that. So there may be a point that you want to take off that hook for cleaning and checking the loop uh, thread guard or thread loop guard and maybe even replacing it. So I've got myself a used guard and a brand new aftermarket one and a used vintage one. So I want to take a look at Coco's hook and take it apart and check that kind of stuff. So for those that are, are more interested in repair or adjust adjustment kind of things. I'm going to open up the motor and uh, check the carbons and replace the carbons if needed and I want to check out this whole lubrication thing on this 301 motor because you know the later later 301 and the 401 series and 500 series and on they didn't use any kind of lubrication on the motor so what's the deal with this um, uh, 301 motor that has the silver lube tube. Uh, you know, some people thought that they just took the uh, featherweight motor and stuck it in a kind of a PA housing and made it internal. But I don't think so because the, this 301 motor has more amps, a higher amp rating than, than the featherweight. So, anyway. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll come back for part 13, One Proud Lady, and, and see her uh, beautiful slideshow of uh, what we've done for the rehab. Thanks for tuning in, and take care.